everyone. Good evening, everyone. Quiet down just for a second, please. Mr. Evans, you ready? Okay. Uh, I would like to bring the October 17, 2018 meeting of the Interborough Board of School Directors to order. May we have a roll call, please, Ms. Caldwell? Ms. Alonzo? Mr. Goldberg, Goldsboro? Here. Mrs. Riccio? Here. Ms. Joseph? Here. Ms. Ms. Bernauer? Here. Mr. Harris? Here. Mr. Evans? Here. Mr. Chavone? Here. Mr. Phelps? Here. Mr. Evans, can we have the invocation and the pledge, please? Heavenly Father, please hear our prayer. Bless all schools, colleges, and especially the Universal District. And grant to this board in the deliberations this evening the spirit of wisdom, truth, and knowledge. What is undertaken always be done in charity, in charity and in peace, and what we do might be for the benefit of others. All this we ask in your name. Amen. There's a flag in the rear. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Okay. Alrighty, we were going to move on and have our res reports from uh, Samantha and Zach down there. At the Kindergarten Academy, they introduced the Positive Behavior Support Program where the children were taught behavioral expectations for the cafeteria, hallway, bathroom, and playground. Each expectation is grounded in the Kindergarten Academy's principles of respectful, responsible, and safe. This month, they will also be supporting bullying, pre bullying prevention and awareness month as a lesson, be a buddy, not a bully, will be taught to each child. Coming up this month, students will be traveling to Highland Orchards and the John Hines Environmental Center. The children will be provided seasonal learning experiences for the students, chaperones, and teachers. These field trips promote opportunities for children to see, hear, touch, taste, and smell the wonders of autumn. They will learn as scientists where they will observe, compare, and record. The knowledge they gain and experiences they will have will become a part of future learning in reading, writing, and math. In Glen Ellen School, our second graders will be taking a trip to the auto aquarium on November 5th. The home and school will hold a Christmas Bazaar slash North Pole on November 30th from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. On Friday, October 5th, students in grades 1 through 5 were treated to a free assembly sponsored by PICO at Norwood School. It was performed by the National Theater for Children. The assembly was titled The Conservation Capers. The students had a wonderful time watching the performance and it was a great way to end the week. The first grade students had a visit by the Norwood Fire Company on Wednesday, October 10th for Fire Prevention Week. They were able to see the fire trucks and ambulances. They all, and they will have trips coming up in the near future. Also, the first graders went to the Villa Orchards on Friday, October 12th from 8.45 to 11.15 a.m. Also, the life skills students traveled to Interborough High School for the annual Special Olympics Fall Festival from 8.45 a.m. to 2 p.m. The past several weeks have been very busy at, here at Prospect Park School. We held our annual open house with tremendous at attendance as hundreds of parents and family members came out to see all the great things that are going on at Prospect Park School. Our back to school night, parents were invited to see our new STEM lab as well as meet with community representatives from our school and our home and school. The eighth grade parent volunteers the Boy Scouts, and get information about the Kindness Walk. To recognize our students' positivity, productivity, and proud behavior, students were invited to a reward assembly featuring Minute to Win It style games and earn prizes. At Tinicum School on Thursday, September 6th, they had their annual middle school meeting with all 6th, 7th, and 8th grader grade students and middle school staff members. The students were reminded of the school policies and expectations for them of the year. They have a great middle school and look forward to a successful year. Fundraising at, Tin at Tinicum is in full swing. The home and school fall fundraiser ended on October 5th, which was the catalog 
which was the catalog of gifts, cookie dough, and other goodies. Home and School also sold beautiful mums. The 8th grade class is selling coupon books and is having an Applebee's breakfast on October 13th. The back to school night on September 25th was a huge success. A new addition to the events this year was a presentation for the parents by Holcomb Behavioral Health. The program dealt with drugs and alcohol and the conversations that parents, guardians, and caregivers should be having with their children. Uh, September 26th back to school night was held at the high school. Many parents were at the high school to meet their sons and daughters teachers for this year. We had many boosters and clubs also selling bucks apparel. It was a great night. Thank you for all the wonderful for the one, wonderful evening. September 28th to September 29th was homecoming, was homecoming weekend. We started with our pep rally that the students thoroughly enjoyed. Next was the annual parade down Trites Avenue to the football field. The band and homecoming court were fabulous. Unfortunately, the football team had a rough night, but the floats were amazing. Saturday night was the homecoming dance and we were, where we announced the homecoming king, Jesse Hickman, and homecoming queen, Olivia Ewing. The student body, the whole student body enjoyed the evening. This concludes our report. Thank you, Ms. Shemlock and Mr. Keeney. Uh, Mr. Keeney, uh, I heard you're going to have a tough powder uh, puff, puff game. game. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to number three. Yeah, no, we're going to we're going to we're going to win. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Phelps. Um, hello, and thank you to our crossing guards for coming this evening. We are recognizing them this month. Uh, on behalf of the Interborough Board of School Directors, administrators, staff, and students, uh, I would like to thank all of our local crossing guards for their invaluable service to our students and our communities, ensuring that our children get to school and arrive home safely each and every day. We have approximately 61 crossing guards throughout the district that provide this service. No matter what the weather conditions may be, our crossing guards are out on our heavily trafficked streets. Many of our crossing guards have lived in the community for many years, in fact, have children in our schools and grandchildren. They have gotten to know many of our students over the years and have developed positive relationships that have lasted from kindergarten through high school. And for that, we would like to recognize you. Comment? Comment? Yes, Mr. Harris. I also would like to thank them. Many times I've gone to, I do my walk around the town and they even cross this old people too, not just the kids. So <laughs> and a, lot, a lot of times I'm not even paying attention. They're like, wait, wait, wait. And they'll help cross me so that I don't get hit by a car. So I also would like to thank them personally for all their <laughs> great work that they do throughout the year. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We do have some certificates and a magnet that we would like to provide you if you when I call your name if you would come up and line up and we'd like to take your picture okay Betty Herman thank you Betty thank you very much Dolores Denennis did I say it correctly okay good good Diane Diem. Thank you, Diane. Rich Goldsboro. Thank you, Mr. Goldsboro. Amy Hamilton Hughes. Thank you, Amy. Susan Hyde. Vicki Wood. Thank you, Vicki. And Lee Pedrick. Thank you, Lee. 
Um, I, I'm, it's unfortunate that more of our crossing guards couldn't be here, but we will ensure that everyone gets their certificate and their magnet. But again, thank you so much for your service. We do appreciate it and ensuring that our kids are getting to school to safely every single day. So thank you so much. Take a picture. Thank you again. Thank you, Ms. Riley, and thank you all the Cross and Guards. We do appreciate everything that you do for our district. Okay, moving on to number four, Mr. Uh, Evans, public comments. First up, we have Mrs. Robin Berkheimer. Good evening. My name is Robin Berkheimer. I'm a resident of Norwood. I'm an Interboro graduate, and I'm also the proud parent of three daughters, two of whom are enrolled within the Interboro School District, and one who is a recent Interboro graduate. I am also employed by the Interboro School District as a highly qualified pre-K paraprofessional in the newly formed Interboro Early Learning Academy. I serve as the president of the Interboro Educational Support Professionals Association, or the IESPA, and this is the union that represents those individuals who play a vital supporting role in the education of all of our students. This union includes everyone from playground assistants, instructional assistants, PCAs, to nurses, web designers, and other technological staff. Tonight, I am here on behalf of the members of the Interboro Educational Support Professionals Association. We have been engaged with the district to bargain since January. We are pleased that we are making some positive prog progress and we remain hopeful that we will soon finalize an agreement. That being said, I would like to take a moment to highlight the difficult position in which many of our members find themselves. Please be reminded that our group is 93% female and most of us live in the Interboro School District, close to 80% of us. We work with students who have special needs we serve those students who have severe disabilities. Some can't speak, many even require assistance in the restrooms, and others need the support and stability of a highly qualified teaching assistant or personal care assistant in order to get through their day. These children deserve a sound education, and we need and want to be there for them. Nearly all of our instructional assistants are paid between nine and $11 an hour. Most of us take home less than $300 a week. We are working with the most valuable asset this community has, our children. We want to be paid what our peers in other districts are making. For instance, this school year, an instructional assistant in the Southeast Delco School District is earning $15.85 an hour. In Wallingford Swarthmore, $15.23, and $18.86 an hour in the Garnet Valley School District. We want to make a living wage. There's so much buzz right now about how the economy is booming and the stock market is rising, but when you ask the members in our group, they speak of how they are underpaid, how they need to work two or three jobs, how they need health care, yet they just can't afford it. Now is the time for this district to do the right thing. None of us begrudge the work that we do. Rather, we are asking for fair and legitimate wages. The amount an employee earns is commensurate to their value to that organization. This district has a budget of $67.8 million, raising our salaries to a reasonable amount that demonstrates that we are valued by this district shouldn't be difficult. Every day I'm hearing from members that aren't living paycheck to paycheck. They flat out are not making it. My hope is that when we settle this contract, which I hope will be soon, that we can provide our members with a solid pay increase so that they feel valued and respected by this district, the one so many of us call home. And in the words of Jimmy Cassis from Culturize, every student, every day, whatever it takes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Mr. Evans, is there any other public comment? Yes, sir. Judy Tillis. Good 
Good evening. My name is Judy Tillis. I'm a grade four teacher at Tinicum School and president of the Interborough Education Association. We know that contract negotiations are continuing between the district and the educational support personnel. On behalf of our teachers, we want to reinforce the value of these support personnel in the overall programs here at Interborough. In the educational environment today, the ESP folks are critical before, during, and after school. For a lot of children, the ESP folks are the first and the last interborough contact a child has in their day. They are our partners and share our mission on a daily basis. Morning greetings, breakfast and lunchtime support, and afternoon goodbyes can make or break a child's attitude towards school. Many of our intervention programs could not exist without the ESP personnel. Certainly, we could not reach as many children without their trained support. Instructional assistants are an important strategy to increase instructional time in the classroom. Having familiar, dependable employees is essential for providing that positive academic culture. Therefore, working towards a fair settlement that acknowledges the important contributions of our ESP personnel will greatly benefit all parties, most essentially our students. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Mr. Evans, is there any other public comment? Yes, Mr. Zerdy Doby. Zerdy Doby, Tinnicum. Item number six, 16. Uh, if you would give a definition, because Mr. Evans at one of the meetings uh, mentioned that there were 18 registered homeless uh, students, I guess. So if you would give a definition, if that's a state definition, what defines someone who is homeless and attends a school uh, during, I guess, during your, your comments as a superintendent. And <clears throat> as it regards to the um, negotiations that you are now with the IESP, uh, how many negotiations have you had in the past month? And who is representing the school board? Is there any school board director on, on, the, uh, on, on the negotiating team? No, uh, right now it's Mr. Chavon and myself. Uh, what happened to Mr. Nickel? He is, he's uh, the attorney. He's not in with the negotiations with us. I see. Okay, so <clears throat> they're asking for a raise. Today, the uh, Delaware County Council held their meeting in media, and during the course of their meeting, uh, Chairman McLean went off the, off the uh, agenda and introduced the sheriff for Delaware County, uh, Sa Sheriff Saunders, Sanders. And he read a statement uh, talking about the condition of the sheriff's department and the high turnover that they have in personnel. And he asked this county, because the budget cycle is now going to be done over the next several months, asked them for a $5 an hour increase for the sheriff's department and its employees. Now, they're asking for an increase and they're pay also. So I'm asking you as a board again to go back and you're losing money at the rate of $2,000 every single day. Since Mrs. Joseph took office in December, you've lost 600, you are responsible for loss of $600,000, which has gone to Tinicum Township and Delaware County in what I consider overpayment of the fixed guarantee payment in the airport agreement. That money could be used to increase the salary. We appreciate your opinion on that, Mr. Doby, but that's your opinion. That's not the school board's opinion. Well, I just want to stop right now, uh, President Phelps, because 
every time, a lot of times when people get up here, you're very rude in your interrupting them. Now, I'm speaking, I'd like to finish without being interrupted. And I think it's rather rude of you to do so, not only to me, but other people who have come up to speak. And it shows a lack of concern for whatever the person is speaking about. Now, you may not think that $800,000 is a lot of money, but I do. And the fact that I live in Tinicum Township and want you to go back to the county and the township to recover that money for the school district's children's education is something that you should do. You refuse to do it. Mr. And Derby, I we refuse to do it because at your request, we went to our solicitor, we discussed this with them, and it was their dialysis or to just leave it alone it's best the way it is right now that we okay so you got a big pile of money in Tinicum and the county and the solicitor says to leave it alone no you because don't leave it, was it alone a contract. you need a new solicitor because that money and can again be that's your opinion we appreciate your opinion no. but that's no, not, it's not an opinion. opinion it's actual money President Phelps, $800,000, and you continue to interrupt. I, you know, it's unfortunate that you would do that. You should step aside as a president because you're, you demonstrate a lack of self-control in allowing people to, to say what they want. So I'm just saying that this issue with regards to the employees that are asking for increases can be addressed with the money that you are losing from that agreement and you go back to the township and the county to recover that money. If they can, if you can sit here and, and say that you don't need it, but you're gonna raise our taxes, you have negotiations with the teachers union coming up in the following year, in 2020, you already have them scheduled for a 2.5, at least a 2.5% increase in their salary for this year which you're going to have to address in the May and June budget. That's going to be at least $750,000 if what Mr. High School has said in the previous year. So you're going to raise our taxes and you're continuing to lose money at the rate of more than $2,000 every single day. Go back in, to the township and the county and re recover that money, readjust that fixed guaranteed payment and provide that money for the education of the children. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Any other public comment, Mr. Evans? No, sir. Moving on to uh, number five, Mr. Evans. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, one more, Mr. Cohen. Ms. Cohen. No, it's okay. 5.1. I have it. Motion 5.1 that the following minutes of the regular meeting of the Interbar Board of School Directors, Directors held on September 19, 2018 be approved. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Uh, next motion, number six, solicitor's report. Ms. Goham. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Um, this month, our office has been consulting with the school district in the following areas. Uh, responses to right to know requests, policy review, uh, special education, litigation and consultation, and also the planning of professional development for staff. Um, and you have also asked me to respond to Mr. Doby's question regarding the definition of homelessness um, as referenced in policy number 251, which is on the agenda tonight. Um, the definition of homeless comes from a federal law called the McKinney-Vento Act. And essentially the definition of homeless under that federal law is students who lack a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime sleeping situation. The full definition is available in the policy itself. And again, that's policy 251. The policy is available online as part of the 
board docs, the board policy, and also in paper form at the administration building and at the various school buildings in the district if you would like to review the entire definition. But that's it in a nutshell. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Thank you, Ms. Gohan. Moving on to number seven, Mr. Evans. Motion 7.1, the detached treasurer's report for the month ending September 30th, 2018 be approved. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 7.2, that fund disbursements in the amount of $7,155,450.28 be approved. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Is there any uh, correspondence, Mr. Evans? No, sir. Uh, moving on to number nine, the committee reports, uh, 9.1, Mr. Chavon. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. The Finance Committee met on Monday, October 1st, 2018. The first item on the agenda was the audit timeline uh, presentation by Mr. High School. A few of the highlights include uh, initial field work being already being completed October 2nd to the 5th, October 8th to the 19th is preparation of the draft audited financial statements. November, uh, a review of the draft audited financial statements by the auditors. December 3rd, the audit committee will meet to review audited financial statements. And at, on December 19th, the board will approve or not approve the audited financial statements. And then March 31st, 2019 is the filing deadline for the federal clearinghouse. When the audit is complete, we will have a public meeting to review the documentation and give the public a chance to comment. This is the final year of our three-year year contract with Majors and Masters, our current auditor, and uh, the board will begin the process of searching for a new auditor or keeping Majors and Masters in the uh, spring. The next item on the agenda was the preliminary financial statements. Uh, all board directors had the opportunity to read the monthly department spendings, year-to-date revenues, and year-to-date expenditures and ask questions. <laughs> The committee adjourned and our next finance meeting will be held November 5th at 7 p.m. in the boardroom of the administration building. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chavon. Moving on to 9.2, Mr. Evans, GBO meeting. Yeah, the GBO meeting commenced immediately following the finance committee meeting and there was one item on our agenda which was marching band uniforms. Several members of the marching band boosters uh, along with the director of the marching band came in and uh, provided us a proposal from Stanbury uh, for new band uniforms along with a, you know, an estimate of costs and some of the fundraising efforts they have, uh, they have done in the, over the past several years. Band uniforms are currently at 12 or more years old. They've been uh, modified over and over again each year by uh, several folks, you know, sitting in cell and trying to adjust the pants and sleeves for you know, different sized children as they join the band. Uh, there's currently about 80 people in the band and color guard. Uh, numbers sometimes go up as high as 100 to 130. Um, so they did provide a proposal with a, a rough cost estimate, and now we have to go back and investigate uh, possible sources of funding for same. Um, they even had a couple of the band members model them for us. Uh, they look really nice. Uh, they're a, um, a more adjustable uniform now. They have snaps on the sleeves and on the um, pant legs so that you can adjust them just by snapping them up instead of having to have a seamstress work on them. And they're a little lighter weight rather than the wool mo military grade uniforms that the children have been wearing for the past several years. Uh, we pointed out that, um, or the band boosters also pointed out that they've raised over $360,000 over the past several years for different uh, things that they needed to uh, keep the band up to speed. Uh, and that doesn't include their uh, Florida trips and whatnot. It's mostly for instruments and uniforms and things like that. And there was one gentleman who unfortunately did pass, uh, but in honor of him, they donated rain gear for all the band members because the rain gear had gotten pretty nasty over time as well. Um, they were doing everything they could to uh, clear the, uh, I guess, the mustiness out of them uh, from, you know, 10 years of rain and hanging up in the closets and things like that. So uh, a parent did donate their uh, rain gear uh, last year. So 
So uh, they're coming to the school board and the school district with a proposal to try and uh, fund new band uniforms. Uh, that being the only item on our agenda, the uh, GBO was uh, adjourned at 741. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Moving on to 9.3, the legislative update, Mr. Recchio. Yes, we have uh, good news for Senator McGarrigal's Senate Bill 1095, which is Keystone exams have been the controversial Pennsylvania high school graduation requirement, and they're about to get much, much less important. State lawmakers this week passed legislation that would push back Keystone graduation requirements until the year 2022 and allow seniors to demonstrate mastery in other ways, such as gaining acceptance into a four-year college, securing full-time employment post-graduation, completing an internship, or earning a to-be-determined score on the SAT exam. High school seniors across the Commonwealth now take exams in English, biology, and algebra. It's a major shift for, for a state that once put a high priority on testing and first proposed in the year 2009. Originally supposed to be a graduation requirement for the class of 2017, then it was pushed back for the class of 2019. Pennsylvania has spent $70 million developing the Keystone exam, which was de designed to prove students' readiness for college and career success. Now that the bill has passed both houses, it's on the governor's desk, and he has indicated that he will sign it. Thank you, Ms. Verrecchio. Uh, moving on to 9.4, Delaware County Community College, Mr. Goldsboro. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Uh, next Wednesday, uh, October 24th, the uh, Board of Trustees at the Delaware County Community College uh, is, uh, is having an annual appreciation dinner for all the high school board directors, uh, superintendents, and, and high school principals. Um, I will be in attendance. Uh, I'm sure some of the other school board members will be there along with the superintendent and maybe some of the principals. Um, immediately following that appreciation dinner, there's going to be uh, the first meeting, uh, at which time uh, I'll be presenting at the November meeting for that. Thank you, Mr. Goldsboro. Moving on to 9.5, Delaware County Intermediate Unit, Mr. Harris. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming out. It's cold in here today, though, isn't it? <laughs> Anyway, let's go. The Delaware County Intermediate Board met on October 3rd, approved the following, to recommend the Upper Darby School District to appoint Russ Bellato and reappoint Ed Cordo to the Delaware County Area Vo Te Vocational Technical Authority Board for a term. Approve the University of Higher Education Partnership to help train our future educators. A memorandum of understanding between the DCIU and the Widener University to provide writing workshops for students at the Lyman Detention Center twice a month for a year. A contract with Apple Incorporate for the DCI to receive trainer training, workshop training as a part of the DCI's ongoing work to provide computer services, professional development to the Delaware County Schools in the Eastern Regional of Pennsylvania to provide to accept and apply for grants to extend services to the DCIU districts and non-public schools. For more news and information, go to dci.org, dciu.org. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. At this time, Mr. Keeney and Ms. Shemlock, you can be excused. Uh, moving on to uh, number 10, Mr. Evans, personnel. This will be from the Office of Personnel, motion 10.1 through 10.11, starting on page two and ending on page six. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Just a quick comment. Yes, Mr. Chavon. I know there looks like a lot of, there's a lot of pages with uh, personnel changes, and uh, we asked the question on Monday night to the HR director, the position, are there, all the positions that need to be filled are being filled appropriately. So just when you're flipping through and seeing all of this, um, Mr. Criscolo has assured us that, you know, the personnel is there for our students. Thank you, Mr. Schubert. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion with regret that the following retirement be accepted. Motion 11.1, .1, Rosemary Reese, Administrative Assistant to the Director of Curriculum and Instruction at the Administration Building with 23 years of service to the district be approved for retirement effective January 4th, 2019. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. From the Office of Curriculum and Instruction, motion the following items be approved, 12.1 through 12.4. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry 8-0. Next motion to Mr. Evans. From the Office of Special Education and Pupil Services, motion 13.1 to 13.7, the following items be approved. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions carry 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. From the Office of Technology, motion the following items be approved, 14.1 and 14.2. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. From the Office of Facilities, motion that the following items be approved, 15.1, that the Board of School Directors approve the revision of the agreement with Oliver Fire Protection and Security for the 2018-19 school year for the annual district-wide fire alarm equipment inspections, revised amount to include $525, not to exceed $9,465 to be paid out of district funds. Second. Motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 8-0. Next motion, Mr. Evans. Motion 16, that the Board of School Directors approve the revisions of the following policies in the categories of programs, pupils, and operations. 100 programs, 103 non-discrimination in school and classroom practices, 103.1 non-discrimination qualified students with disabilities, and 104 non-discrimination in employment practices, under 200 for pupils, 251 homeless students. Under 800, operations, 819, suicide awareness, prevention, and response. Second. Motions have been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry 8-0. Moving on, uh, do we have any old business? Hearing none, moving on to new business, uh, Ms. Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Uh, on Sunday, October 14th, many of our students, families, and community members participated in the sixth annual Kindness Walk. This has been a joint effort between the school district, Community for Change, and Prospect Park Barrow. The morning was filled with many activities, face painting, refreshments, and music. Uh, I would like to thank Tracy Mayer for all of her work putting this together and the many sponsors who continue to support this worthwhile event. To all of the parents that paid ahead for their t-shirts and one were unable to attend, you can call the administration building at 610-461-6700, extension 1133, and make arrangements to pick up your shirt or we can send them home with your child. Only students who participate, participated in the walk received a, a free t-shirt. If you would like to purchase any additional t-shirts, they are $4 each. Uh, I was honored today to participate in the 2018 Hall of Fame induction ceremony. The new honorees are Kimberly Duffy, class of 1984, Rich Williams, retired Prospect Park teacher, and Al Hagen, class of 1975. Each of these honorees shared their professional and personal success stories and how attending Interborough School District played a significant role in their accomplishments. I highly recommend that parents, students, and staff visit the community page of our website and read more about these honorees and all of the Hall of Fame recipients. 
I would like to thank Interborough alumni and the Hall of Fame committee for the time they have dedicated to supporting the district and continuing the Hall of Fame tradition. And finally, the district is seeing an increase in the number of students possessing and using vaping and nicotine devices. The district over the course of the last few months has confiscated a number of these devices on school property. To ensure that parents have the most current information on this issue, we have coordinated with Holcomb Behavioral Health to provide a parent presentation on November 8th at the high school regarding the health and safety risks to our students. We also have assemblies scheduled in all middle and high school for all middle and high school students in early November. We will also be adding useful information to the website for parents that will be available within the next few days. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Riley. Uh, any other board members? Uh, myself, I'd like to just read a little something here that I prepared for uh, our IESP group. Um, first of all, I want you all to know you have our utmost respect and appreciation. Don't think for one second that your group is not appreciated by this school district or this board. Okay, the Interborough Board of School Directors values the hard work and dedication of our IESP support staff. The district has been bargaining in good faith since February 2018. We believe we have made great progress over the six formal sessions and have another formal session scheduled for October 23rd at I'm hoping we can maybe sign something at that. Not a promise, but a hope. Um, the board is eager to come to an agreement that is fair to our support staff and also to the taxpayers as a whole. And uh, we, do some, we do want to support you. We do appreciate you. And believe me, we are working hard and feverishly at getting a resolution to this. I know myself, Mr. Chavon, and of uh, course, uh, Mr. Cascola, he's in every meeting, and he's beyond every meeting, in the background, working feverishly at getting this settled. And for one second, don't think this isn't on our minds. We, we definitely want to get this settled, and we want to get it settled where we both are at a happy decision. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Hearing none on Monday, November 5th, 2018, a finance committee meeting with the GBO meeting immediately following will be held at 7 p.m. in the boardroom of the administration building. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next work session of the Interborough Board of School Directors will be convened in the boardroom of the administration building on Monday, November 12th, 2018 at 7 p.m. The next regularly monthly public meeting of the Interborough Board of School Directors will be convened in the boardroom of the administration building on Wednesday, November 14, 2018 at 7 p.m. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming.